Hi, this is Peter Godinas, your ambassador with K80Y TV. And you know, one of my favorite segments, because I get a chance to work with George Miller of uh, the Citizens Journal US, which is the website. Uh, US, right. US, mm -hmm. and you know, he tells it like it is with traditional forms of media, people chasing up things. He finds things that people don't know about. And so let me shut up and say, here's George. Good to see you again, Peter. It'll always be good to yeah. see you. Missed you last week because the KADY staff was off on another assignment. But you know, with the election coming up uh, for city council and mayor, we have some opportunities to become more familiar with the candidates. First of all, a lot of the candidates are profiled right here on KADY by Peter himself. You can find them on the KADY.net site. Uh, there's a lot of interesting personal information as well as political positions of the candidates. I agree with you. But you have an opportunity tonight at 7 o'clock at River Park. There will be a candidate forum, and most of the candidates will be showing up. And the address is 3050 Thames River. It's at Rio Vista Middle School tonight at 7. Unfortunately, most people will see this after that happens. So, so you have another opportunity on October 1st. There will be another candidate forum at City Hall at 7 p.m. Uh, I believe that all of the candidates for positions will be there as far as I know. You know, most people really have no idea who they're voting for. They see signs up around the community, you know, vote for Perillo, vote for McDonald, vote for Flint. But they really don't know who these people are. Uh, I've personally learned a lot just by going to almost every city council meeting for the last year and to some affiliated meetings too. And you really get to understand a lot about the character of the people that are serving us. One thing that continually amazes me is these folks put in a huge amount of time from very little money. So you don't do this unless you really love your community or you have some kind of political agenda. So you need to decide which of those it is before you make your voting decision. Because it is important, it does affect your lives, and it certainly affects your pocketbook. Uh, I think it was about two or three weeks ago I was talking about uh, the new city manager, Greg Nyhoff, and that he'd be making some major changes. Well. The first shoe dropped yesterday. Uh, I found out at the city council meeting that uh, we knew there would be a lot of personnel changes coming up, but the first change, ironically, was the personnel manager. Uh, the director of human resources, Michelle Tellis, is no longer with us, and she's replaced by Karen Burnham. And if anybody knows the personnel better than Karen Burnham, I can't think of anyone. So it's uh, an interesting, maybe inspired move. Uh, for those of you who don't know, she was the acting city manager for a couple of years while the council made up his mind about a replacement. And then she went into an assistant city manager when Nyhoff came on board. And now she's moved over to human resources. So we'll still George, have when was this still. announced? Yeah, it's kind of weird uh, it the was, host well, not to, to my knowledge, it was announced. But basically, uh, City people uh, informed the star, the star put a, a line out. I found out about it at the meeting last night, just talking well, to the city employees. Well, so. we're the right people to hang around. Right, and, and, and I'll talk to the host, you never know. Uh, Mr. Nyhoff has not said why he did this yet. I'm trying, I have an interview scheduled with him, and I hope to find out and give you some, some feedback. And you'll let us know right away. I, I will definitely let you know yeah. in real time. Okay, real time. <laughs> right. They have the first before I do it. That's right. The okay, good. Okay, what else is going on? Well, you know, uh, I mentioned uh, a couple of months ago Ago that the city owes $440 million in various debts. <laughs> and it's trying to manage that money, and, and the debt keeps on going up. Well, quite a bit of it was refinanced, or at least it was agreed to last night. For the last few months, the uh, city finance department has been looking at upcoming bonds that are due, attempting to refinance them at lower rates. You know, the country's uh, depression, which has forced interest rates down to almost zero, has really helped us a lot because the city has refinanced quite a few bonds in the last couple of years to lower rates. And they came up with about nine and a half million dollars worth of savings last night in refinancing our wastewater bonds and also approved a bond issue uh, to help finance the $30 million street resurfacing project. Uh, those of you who were involved with the budget debate over the last year know that the city uh, inhabitants put a very high priority on fixing the streets. Uh, the, the closest major street to me is Harbor Boulevard. And the potholes are absolutely awful. It's the worst in the city. And I finally found out they're going to start resurfacing that in October. So I'm personally happy. Uh, and for those who are interested, there's a chart of all the street resurfacing projects that will take place. Uh, and that project's supposed to be completed by January of 2017. But we have to borrow $20 million more to do that. And the other $10 million is coming mostly from Measure O, which is a sales tax uh, increase that was enacted uh, about five to six years ago, I guess. So, so much on the financial end. Uh, unfortunately, there's a downside to all that. Uh, 
I saw on the agenda there's a 6% wastewater utility increase slated to go into effect. It was supposed to be discussed last night, but somehow they never got to that agenda item before 11 o'clock when the meeting bro broke up. Uh, <coughs> Also, uh, I, I, don't, I don't recall if I talked about it because the meeting, uh, our session was canceled, but the, we have discussed before that uh, there have been several rather high profile killings of people by the police, some for very good reasons, some for not very good reasons. And there's been sort of a groundswell movement by citizens showing up at demonstrations, coming to city council meetings and raising hell. And it finally bubbled over recently. The uh, city, um, uh, commission on, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the commission, the Community Relations Committee, Commission set up a subcommittee called Public Safety, which was studying that very issue. Uh, and evidently it, it got some people's noses out of joint because uh, at the meeting on the 15th, uh, the chairman of the commission, Orlando Dozier, who's also a past city council candidate in the 2013 special election, uh, unilaterally dissolved all subcommittees of the commission, including the Public Safety Commission, which was studying that issue. And it created a huge amount of pushback. And last night that came up in the City Council for the first time. The City Council agreed in principle to hold a public forum to discuss some of the public safety uh, uh, issues. Uh, those of you who have been following that know that uh, activist groups have demanded things such as cameras on all the police, police review board and various changes in training and procedures. And it appears that there's consensus on doing uh, the cameras and, and also consensus on having some kind of public forum, some meeting. There's a lot of pushback on the police review board for some good reasons which I've discussed in this forum before. So I'll let you know when the date comes up for that forum because it's a, it's a rather important issue really. So there's a lot of stake there. Uh, also discussed last night was an audit done by the HUD, the Housing Urban Development Group, uh, on our own city housing department. Uh, our commissioner of uh, housing retired a few months ago, Commissioner Wilkins, and I don't know if it had anything to do with the audit, but the audit uncovered some really bad bookkeeping problems and accountability. It also uncovered some defects in some of the housing stock owned by the city and action will have to be taken on that, and also some things related to management of homelessness programs. So to make a long story short, a lot of that's been moved from the city to the county along with the funding, and that, that's, by the way, endorsed by the Homelessness Commission, which feels that's actually a good move. Uh, a consultant by the name of Bob Dice was hired to study the whole thing, came out with a report, presented that report last night. It's too long to discuss here, but you can access that online by going to the Oxnard City Council, looking at uh, past videos in case you want to sit through a five-hour show. The benefit of coming here is the five hours get spoiled down to 11 minutes. Got to net it out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> net it out. Right. Another big thing that happened is that the city presented a progress report on the coastal plan for the city. And it would probably take me several hours to describe the coastal plan, but suffice to say that it addresses the use of the coast in terms of parks, the location of the power plants, which the city is trying to eliminate, the development of Mormon Beach, which has been a long 20-year struggle to take a, a bunch of different parcels, stitch them together. We now have a full-time unpaid caretaker there. We have a botanical gardens manager. Uh, we have many different uh, study programs from universities of the abundant bird life there. They eventually they want to make it into a park, so that's, that's part of the commission's plan. The most controversial portion of that was a so-called sea rise study. Uh, those who are proponents of global warming believe that the sea will rise up and swallow up the entire community here if we don't do something about it. So the city actually commissioned a plan uh, to study the effects of sea rise and there was quite a bit of lively debate about that last night to be sure because the sea rise already predicted has not occurred so there's obviously a disconnect there someplace and people want to know where the $450,000 for that and related studies are going. The only other controversy which wasn't discussed was the location of the power plants. Uh, in past reports here we've talked about uh, NRG, the operator of the power plants, desire to shut down the Ormond Beach plant, which everyone agrees with, and to tear down the Mandalay plant, which is 55 years old, replace it with a high-tech, new, uh, low-profile uh, plant that would meet our power needs for the next 50 years, supposedly. Not so much for that. Uh, on a lighter note, uh, we had a celebration last night of 
50 years of sis, uh, sister city relationships with Ocotlan, a Mexican city, and there were people there from Ocotlan, and they talked about how the different cities helped each other out and stuff like that. Any questions so far? Man, I hope not. All right. That's an awful lot of stuff. Right? No, I like the way you say, you know, I guess it, with, with us, we can condense seven hours worth of inf important information down to what, three and a half minutes would say attention span? Well, a, a, 11 meetings. minutes. You know, it's a problem, Bill. I sit through these five hour meetings. I'll tell you, my butt is sore. I need to eat candy to stay awake. Oh. And the drone's on and on. And there's all kinds of political maneuvering. So the question is, how can you adequately summarize and distill what happened in that meeting? And that meeting itself is a distillation of things that happen in committees all over the community. Uh, and those things gradually percolate up to the, uh, the level of the city council when they deem to be important enough that the, the work has been done and there's enough consensus to actually present it at city council. And you think they're consensus, but we have knocked down, drag out battles at these things, even after things were supposedly resolved before they got to the city council level. Well, we have to do a series on modern filibusting one of these days. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah. I haven't seen people do that. But again, yeah, George, always okay. a pleasure. As I encourage you, pedal to the metal, be All who right. you are and let's report it as is. So thank you very much, and this is Peter Godinas with KDY-TV with George Miller.